hi hello um hi so today's video is gonna be a little bit i didn't say hi friends what was that Uh, hello, hi, how are you? I hope you guys are having a great day today. Um, today's video is gonna be like a get ready with me. A little over two years ago now, the reason my channel first started kind of like popping off uh, was because I would do get ready with me and I would talk about tea. And I kind of stopped doing those just because, I don't know, I felt like you could only see me get ready so many times. But today I just kind of felt like I wanted to do this again because today's topic is a little bit tricky for me to talk about and it's a little bit more difficult. I think I'll be able to like speak my thoughts a little bit better if I get ready while I do it. So that's what we're going to do today. I probably won't say the products I'm using, but I'll have everything linked so you guys can go check it out down below. Um, so today's video is we're talking about Shane Dawson. I filmed this video like three times already and I haven't posted it and the main reason for that is because i feel like this is a difficult for some reason this topic feels kind of hard and i think that's if i'm being honest there's probably a lot of reasons for that so let's just start with like what's been going on so shane dawson has been under a lot of scrutiny and has had a lot of people very angry at him myself included the smith family included the bay hive included not only have olds clips of him resurface that are problematic like all the isms you could possibly think of he's done it but there's now also a lot of old clips coming out that are iliac in nature one of the clips that has been surf resurfacing is a video of him talking to his 11 or 12 year old cousin about inappropriate things there's a video of him pretending to to a picture of a then 11 year old Willow Smith. There are videos of him saying that he has inappropriately touched other kids when he was a kid. And the thing about it is the clips really go on and on and on and on. Like you could really go on forever with these clips of like, it's like an endless hole. And I think that's what's throwing people. I think a lot of times in these sorts of situations when somebody is having old things brought up it's usually like a few things from like one point in their life or even with like laura lee and you know when people found things about brett monroe they were a few things from a small portion of time 2012 in particular seemed to be a really bad year for people so i think what is so jarring about this whole thing is not only is this not just one or two videos where he made an offhand joke, it's a pattern of behavior of him saying every offensive, rude, crude, horrible thing you could possibly think of. I think from a community standpoint, I think some people are in the boat of, oh, it happened a long time ago. So it, it should just be forgiven because he's changed. Personally, that's not the boat that I fall in. And also I'll link Amanda's video down below on the topic of saying that cancel culture is super toxic is low key coded racism. She has a great video on that. Cause it opened my eyes in a lot of different ways. But I think the large majority of people, it's either you didn't know who Shane Dawson was and you're like, okay, he's not a good person or you've been a follower and you've watched him for any amount of time. And I think a lot of people, the thought process is, how is this just coming out now? How was he able to say and do all of these things, have all of these things happen? How was he able to create this type of horrific content? And how was he able to still rise to be one of the most respected, well-liked, non-problematic is what people would say. How did he rise to that level? I don't know how it's gone unchecked for so long. I don't know how it's gone unnoticed for so long. Before a lot of the really bad stuff came out, like the Willow Smith thing and like the Smiths calling him out, Jada and Jaden both called him out. Before all that happened, Shane gave an apology. I want to talk about the apology because I don't know, frankly, what would have been enough 
but that certainly was not. Basically, Shane talked about how, I'm gonna give you the brief rundown, because I don't care to go through the entire thing because it really was a lot of nothing, in my opinion. Um, but he went through this breakdown of how people don't have to forgive him, how, you know, he knows that he's changed and he's super embarrassed by all the things he said and did. And then he, you know, apologized for his Twitter manifesto that he created a couple of weeks ago about the beauty community and he apologized about those things and it was just a whole lot of that here's where it gets complicated for me as an individual and not just me as like a watcher of all things drama and this is the first time really i guess it happened technically a couple like last year but this is the first real time where i feel like i know somewhat of the person that I'm talking about. And that's because Shane last year tweeted about me as a channel that he watched when he was talking about small beauty channels and we connected in DMs. And again, like we've had a few conversations. I wouldn't call us friends, but overall, like he was super nice to me. He never attacked me in the DMs. I spoke critically of him and I didn't feel like he ever attacked me for it. I do look back on those conversations and try to think like, were you being manipulated? And like, maybe but at the time it did not feel like he was trying to manipulate me because nothing he said to me ever changed the type of content that i made but he was nice he's a very nice person to me and at the same and like he promoted my palette he had no reason to he had no you know he didn't have to but he did he proposed he promoted my palette and i think even for people who don't know shane personally have never talked to him feel that way about him because of the persona he puts on to the internet of i am this nice person i'm youtube's dad he even says it himself he's like i am youtube's grandpa i'm youtube's dad everybody comes to me for advice he's known for saving careers he saved tana mojo after tana he brought a new perspective to Jake Paul. That's how everybody knows of him. He has this public image and even behind the scenes it, it matched up. That public image and that private image matched up for me. However, it's abundantly clear to me now that at least some of that is not real. And it's not even just because of the Tati Westbrook situation. It's not even just because behind the scenes, it seems like he's kind of a pot stirrer and pretty shady. Because frankly, of everything that's happened recently, I think that is the least offensive thing he's done is be involved in this James and Tati situation. I think that's the least of his problems at the moment. But that's the only one he cares to comment on. It really feels he knew that this content existed. As a content creator, you know what you make. If I thought there was anything I made years ago that could in any way be perceived as offensive, I've, I've done it in videos. <laughs> I had a video, and I'm not saying this to like moral posture. I'm saying this because it's what any good content creator should do if you make a mistake is you fix it. I had a video where I accidentally promoted an MLM, didn't do my due diligence, was at like 3,000 subs, didn't think it through, didn't look into what I was promoting, and that video has been privated since that. Shane Dawson has known that this type of problematic, horrific content has been out there. And the thing about it, kind of going back to my first point, is like for a lot of these people that we've seen having old stuff resurface, and I'm not saying this to belittle what they've done, because it's bad too, but a lot of it is one point in time, one tweet, two or three tweets, one video. With Shane, it's over the course of years and years and years and years. Like his podcast where he made all of these horrific jokes for, and he, his excuse for that was, oh, I was just trying to make my co-host laugh as if that means literally anything. There's such a history here. And the problem is he can try and claim that he's changed and he's a better person now and he is more woke and he understands he's done the work. He can claim that and maybe he has, but what I see in front of me, what your actions have shown me is that you have still been profiting off of those videos all this time. Those videos just went away. You just took down your entire Shane Dawson TV channel where a po huge portion of those jokes are from. You just took down a bunch of different videos. Your Shanae merch was still available. He was directly profiting off of causing pain to marginalized groups of people and making jokes about he was profiting off of that. And his thought process for what would be a good enough apology, what would be a good enough excuse for that. I'm sorry if this chair is squeaking. I think one of the legs is loose. His his thought process for what he thought would be a good enough apology for that, what he thought he could do is get on YouTube 
and just speak from the heart and say, well, I've changed and I'm gonna show you I've changed. I'm not gonna lie. If you've been watching my channel for a while, I'm usually not that girl who's like, oh, let's de-platform people. Like, I, that's not my gig. That's never what I promote. I all, I did a video about it a while back about like when you deserve to be deplatformed. And YouTube has already demonetized, allegedly, all three of his channels. So he is monetarily probably paying the price for this. But honestly, I don't think that's good enough. I don't think being demonetized is good enough. I don't think a video showing an apology is good enough. I know a lot of people are gonna say, we need to give him a chance. We need to let him show growth. We need to let him change we need to let him show that and I'm very sure that that is like the nice kind thing to do like I'm sure that would be nicer but I'm not going to lie the idea I'm getting really heated <laughs> the idea that Shane Dawson has been able to gain I think I'm just gonna do brow gel today guys I don't I can't be bothered with the brows at the moment the idea that Shane Dawson has been able to amass over 20 million YouTube followers become one of the biggest creators on the platform come one of the most successful creators on the platform the idea that everything he has built every freaking pig hoodie he has sold every conspiracy palette that's been sold and the mansion that he bought everything that he had the bedazzled fridge the idea that everything that shane dawson is and has the idea that the foundation of that is based on systemically oppressing people with your bullshit. It just, it, I can't do it. I can't support it anymore. We literally, Jenna Marbles had a, and not to compare the two, again, because I don't want to belittle what Jenna did too. I don't want to belittle what she needed to apologize for. But she had a fraction and knew that it was time to take herself off of the internet. Shane has made more than enough money off of his, again, he's made all of that money the basis of him making that money the basis of that popularity is and yeah and all of the other isms you can think of that is the basis of how he got to where he is today is based in that and he has made enough money that he could very happily just retire right now and this is kind of a moment where and i again i i don't know if shane's gonna watch this video frankly i don't know if he's like not watching videos about himself i don't know what he is doing right now but i do know that in the past when i have made videos about him he's watched them because he's told me he's watched them so this is like my little bit of a message to Shane. I know and understand that this must be very frustrating for you as like an individual. I can break it down enough to understand and see how frustrating it is for you. I truly believe that Shane thinks that he's changed. I truly believe a lot of these people when they make these types of videos, I believe that they think that they've changed. I believe that. But honestly, truly and frankly, it does not matter if you think you've changed at this point. It doesn't. As someone who is literally a YouTube god at this point, is like god level status on YouTube, as somebody who is that high up on YouTube, you have to hold yourself to a higher standard. You have to. You have millions and millions and millions of a lot of young people watching you and looking up to you. I completely understand how we as content creators, because I, I feel it too, and I know a lot of other content creators feel it. Sometimes it genuinely, especially if you're getting hate or if you're just getting annoying comments, sometimes it really does feel like people forget that you're a real person. Like sometimes you feel like people forget that you're just like a normal human being who made mistakes in your life. Totally understand that. In your head, I'm sure that you still are thinking, but I'm just a person. Your person, the person that you, your personality and your person has transcended YouTube. You are no longer just Shane Dawson, the person. You are Shane Dawson, the person who has the power to influence millions of people. And I am sure that Shane has hired somebody to do his PR now. And I am sure that him and Jeffrey are like gonna figure out the next move. I'm sure. And that's another thing. Shane, I would love to ask if you are watching this, as I'm sure many people would love to ask you if they had access to you. Why in the f are you still friends with Jeffree Star? Why? Why are, if you've changed so much, 
and you have made so much progress as much as you say you have why are you still friends with people like tana mojo why are you still friends with people like trisha paytas why are you still friends with people like jeffree star what sense does that make if you i don't buy this whole act of like well i'm attracted to broken people me too that's why i went to social work um like i get it i get that you're you want to help people i understand that but you have crossed the line at this point when it comes to your videos of helping people helping people and trying to help them and giving them a platform to have people sympathize for them giving objectively bad people who do bad things with their platform giving them an even larger platform and by endorsing them giving them your fan base as well in his apology he addressed that he was like i know it just looks like i'm just i just talk to white people and like i just give white people a platform and it's like it's not even just white people it's problematic people <laughs> It's racist people. Jake Paul, Tana Mojo, Jeffree Star, what do they have in common? They've all in the past said the n-word and had it recorded and uploaded online because they felt so emboldened in their racism to do so. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be yelling. I'm, I'm a bit, like, honestly, I wish I could just talk. To, I, I don't even want to talk to Shane, frankly, but, like, this is what I would ask. These are the questions that I would ask. Frankly, at this point, I know he's sitting down with his BFF, Jeffrey, and I know they're, like, making a plan of, like, what they're gonna do in this situation, how they're gonna get out of it. And frankly, like, in my personal opinion, stop stop doing that all that you can do right now is take what you are getting take the anger that people are mad at you for i understand that it really must i can't actually i can't even understand what it's like to have millions of people hate you i can't i can't understand that and say horrible things about you i truly can't understand that however if you truly want people to think that you've changed and you truly believe that you have changed instead of being defensive about everything being defensive about the criticism you're receiving and being defensive about people being upset at you you have to just take it this is one thing i'll never understand about people they're like well i already apologized that doesn't absolve you from never talking about it again what is wrong with apologizing more than once what is wrong with you did something that's like actually it's not just something little this isn't a little tea scandal you have a monetized chronological history of doing horrible sh people are allowed to be angry at you about that people are allowed to be mad he has three options right so he could continue he could like make that original apology never say anything again and like keep making content and doing his thing and being defensive and defending himself against stuff and trying to make excuses or trying to justify why what he why he said what he said and all of this right like he could keep doing that and honestly you know it's so sad he'd probably be just fine <laughs> like yes there'd be some pushback yes there'd be some problems but he would probably be just fine he would probably still get millions of views on his videos he would still have fans that support him no matter what so that is a viable option for him at this point he could also continue to make content but listen to other people provide voices to the people that he's hurt i do genuinely believe with all of the jokes that he made about stuff like I know a lot of people think that that's because he is one and I totally understand that from my perspective as somebody who has a degree in like mental health stuff it's not uncommon for people who do go through childhood trauma like that to cope with it by making jokes that's not uncommon does that mean those jokes are in any way okay or an acceptable coping mechanism no but the thing about that is like it's, it doesn't matter what the intent was behind them because they are hurtful. Did you have Jada Smith calling you out because she had to watch you do disgusting things to her daughter? I, I feel like this has been a very large theme on the channel lately, but if your mental health causes you to do things that hurt other people, it's not necessarily 100% your fault, but it's your responsibility to fix it. It's your responsibility to make the changes so you don't continue to hurt people. It's your responsibility to try and get those things under control. So if Shane's not already in therapy, not already receiving counseling, I would, I would highly recommend you do so. I would really truly unpack why you thought it was acceptable to make those types of jokes in the first place. And that's another reason why I get to the third option, which is do, a, unfortunately, this is what it's coined now, but it's like do a Jenna Marbles, leave YouTube. And honestly, I'm not gonna lie. 
I back to I know I'm like circling back to the deplatforming thing. When your entire existence, when years and years of content that you have that was still monetizable up until recently is based in things that are that hateful, I don't think you should continue. I think real change and real growth would acknowledge that you profited off of systemic racism, all of the isms, <laughs> that you profited off of that for years, that you grew your platform from that, and real growth would be acknowledging that you did that and now not allowing it to happen anymore. I think we're gonna continue to see this a lot with YouTubers, honestly, the YouTubers that have been on the platform for such a long time. And I think it's a mix of a lot of things. I think it's a mix of a lot of things for some reason. You know, how come we're just finding all of this out now? How come it's all just coming to light now? Where was all this information years ago? Why did people ever subscribe to him if this was the content he was making? And I think what a lot of people forget, because it's so easy to forget, is a lot of people say, well, YouTube was the wild, wild west back in the day. But I think it even goes further than that. It wasn't even just that it was the wild, wild west. Nobody knew this platform existed. The YouTube only really started getting incredibly popular in the last like five years. So a lot of the people subscribed to Shane were probably people who thought like him, who thought racist people, who thought that those jokes were funny. And then when he started to become more of an edgelord, that's the type of audience he spoke to. And now that he's this mock documentarian, that's the audience that he sort of got along to. When he was doing food videos, that was his audience. Shane is the ultimate YouTube chameleon. And I think, honestly, to be successful on this platform for this long, you would have to be somewhat of a chameleon. And I think that's why for so long, all of this is like gone unchecked, is because he is such a chameleon and is able to adapt to every new YouTube trend. And I think, honestly, what I hope people are learning from this, and even myself as a content creator, I think we were all very quick to stand and just blindly support people and blindly put our faith in them and love them and give them money and support them. And it was like we knew them. That's how it felt. I think that's how a lot of people felt with Shane. They felt like they knew him. And it's hard because as a content creator, obviously I and all other content creators profit off of that parasocial relationship. We profit off of you guys liking us and wanting to be our friends and wanting to support us and watch the ads all the way through. Like we profit from that. So we want you to feel that way. But at the same time, it leads to an almost, I feel on the content creators part, it leads you to low key be a little bit manipulative. It leads you to being a little bit more of a chameleon, at least to be in incredibly successful at it like all of these top people are. I think this whole world of people being our idols who aren't just characters that they play, it's them. They are the idol. They are the icon. Them, their personality is what they make money from. I think this is kind of the consequence of that new territory that we've entered with YouTube. I don't know what happens from here. I don't know where Shane's gonna go. I don't know what Rylan's gonna do. I don't know what everyone associated with Shane's gonna do. I don't know what Jeffrey's gonna do. I don't know what Taki's gonna do. I don't know what any of these people are gonna do. But I sincerely, sincerely hope that there is a precedent set with this situation of taking real accountability and showing real growth and change from past action. Because we have allowed this man to directly profit off of oppress I mean, he's oppressed his his comedy his comedy is oppressive. We've allowed him to have a massively successful career despite those things. I'd be very interested to know what you guys think we should be done like what you think Shane should do. I'd be interested to know what you guys think is going to come from this situation. If anything is going to come from this situation, I'd be interested to know your thoughts on the situation with Shane. Can he redeem himself? Is there a way to redeem yourself from this? I just don't see it. If there is, I don't see it. You can't build your empire on dead bodies and then be upset when you end up in jail is kind of how I see it. I'm interested to know what you guys think. I really hope you let me know down below. I hope this video made sense. Like I said, weird video to make. I love you guys so much. I hope you like this video. If you did, please like and subscribe or just like or just subscribe or do neither. Honestly, just so happy you're here watching me. Thank you so much for being here. My merch, my social media and everything that I just put on my face will be linked down below along with a link to register to vote. If you do nothing else, please click on that link and pre please register to vote. And along with that will also be my little social justice spotlights where I'm putting petitions, places to donate, things that you should be doing um, to support the current movement that's happening. And yeah, I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Bye. <laughs> this is such a awkward ending. Okay, bye.